This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the super easy all-in-one platform that will help you build your own website. Stand out and succeed online with Squarespace. Uh, hi. Uh, Disney, sir? Oh, Asha! Hello! Come in, come in. How can I help you? Um, so, I just read the script, and let me just say, it's an absolute honor to be chosen to be the 100th anniversary movie. But, I do have a couple of questions. Oh yeah, sure, sure, go ahead. Shoot away. <laughs> Great. So, um, it says here that I won't be in 2D. That's right. But... It also says here that I'll be 3D trying to look 2D. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to look, but I'm sure our loyal fan base won't mind. Because here in Disney, we have a mindset of creativity comes first before money. So, why not just make me 2D? Wouldn't that make sense since we are celebrating the 100th anniversary? Oh, that's because creatively it's a bit difficult and it won't make a lot of money. But you just said- Look, Asha, listen. I know recently our company here has had a bad rep as of late, but this film is a celebration of a century of Disney. We're not going to screw this one up. Don't worry, we have this massive, big, grand plan for you and your movie. Hey, remember all the princesses that we've all come to love and adore? Yeah? Well, this has nothing to do with them. Oh. It kind of sounded like you were going somewhere. And remember all those amazing songs that we've made throughout the years? Uh-huh. Well, we're going to make sure that your songs are super generic that it will never be on the same level as those songs. Well, we don't really have Oh, to and one last thing. Notice how we're currently riding the multiverse trend, you know, with the Spider-Man and the X-Men. How about a movie that'll connect all past Disney movies and have all our iconic characters face off against a greater evil. Oh my gosh, that actually sounds really cool. Well, we're gonna do none of that. Huh? Instead, we're gonna get a goat. Yeah. This will work. <laughs> we need to talk about Disney, man. What the hell is happening? Is this the same company that gave us all this? Because I don't see it. 2023 was not a good year for Disney. Which is weird because it kind of looked promising too. To pretty much wrap up the year, Disney wanted to end their 100th anniversary celebration with an animated movie. Wish. So, what is Wish all about? Set in the kingdom of Rosas, a young sorcerer's apprentice named Asha would set out on a mission with the magical star to defeat an evil dark magic before it can destroy everyone's wishes. Released back in November 2023, Wish would yet again be another Disney financial disappointment, joining multiple projects in that year alone. Again, 2023 was not a good year for Disney. I'm not really gonna go into the math on this one. A lot of people said that I actually have to count the marketing costs together with how much the domestic and international theaters take a cut. There's like percentages thrown in there and fractions and shit. Yeah, I ain't doing all that. Bottom line is, Wish had a $200 million budget and got $230 million in return. Net profit? Don't get me wrong, the movie is not that bad. But I would be lying to you if I don't say that this movie is just one big massive disappointment. Look, we have a lot to talk about this movie. My issues being with the writing, the songs being forgettable, the characters being bland, and so much more. So why don't we just jump in and get it over with? Why was Wish such a massive disappointment? Did they do anything wrong? Did they do anything right? Well, Let's find out. Let's dive in and take a look at Disney's biggest disappointment so far, Wish. But before that, here's a word from our sponsor. 
This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build your own ideal website. Either it's for your business, your brand, or for your own personal use, Squarespace has you covered. Show off your awesome stuff using Squarespace's blogging tools. Whether you're into showing off your amazing photos, telling captivating stories, or just sharing your videos, Squarespace has all the features you need to post, organize, and even schedule your content. Squarespace also offers flexible and easy-to-use website templates so that you don't have to work from scratch. Pick a design, tweak it however you like, and it'll look great on any given device. Planning to sell some of your products? Well, Squarespace can help you with that as well. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash or click the link in the description down below. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So our movie begins with a pretty cool reference, a nod to the opening sequence to their first ever animated film, Snow White. It was kinda expected, I mean they are celebrating their 100th anniversary so it makes sense to reference their first ever animated feature film right off the bat. It's a pretty well done callback too, recreating the introduction down to a T, to the font style, the elegant white book, the music, but they did leave out the 2 minute window where they give credit to the animators and staff plus a heartfelt message from Walt, but that was a time when Disney actually cared about their shit so let's not talk about that. But yeah, a good call. Back. Fits perfectly well with the tone of the film. So far, so good. Oh boy! I sure do hope the other references and easter eggs later in the movie are subtle and organic and stays in line with the movie's theme and not at all feels forced and distracting most of the time. Right? Right? Disney? 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 We get a quick backstory of a sorcerer named Magnifico, which starts off a bit weird and only gets confusing from here on out, but don't worry, we'll get into that. After a quick exposition dump, we get to meet our main character, Asha, all together with her grandfather Sabino, her mother, and of course, her fellow animal sidekick, my grandfather. The most Valentino. Heads up, this version of Valentino is the best one we'll get. He's only gonna be so much worse from here on out. And just like that, we're off to our first song, Welcome to Rosas. It's not really the best song out here, not gonna lie. It does sound like the discount version of the Family Madrigals in Encanto, and they also do a similar approach where the movie provides exposition in a half-assed yet clever way. In Encanto, the kids pestered Mirabelle into sharing information about the family. Meanwhile here, Asha's a tour guide, so it makes sense that she's spewing out all this information to a bunch of random people. But unlike Encanto, there are a few things that stand out in this number. In a bad way. One thing to know that I just really didn't like about this number was the visuals. Yeah, apart from it still looking unrendered as fuck, the movements and effects just look so bland. It's an upbeat musical number about a kingdom ran by a sorcerer who can grant wishes, and it's boring as hell. The kingdom looks empty. We get too many static wide shots and a lot of standing around. What's worse is that if you listen to the lyrics and music, you can just imagine how colorful and grand the number could be in your head. Yet in the movie, we get this. There's this one lyric in particular that was such a hilarious letdown in the visual department. The lyric goes, you wanna dance on beat or to have hair touch down to your feet. Go to outer space. Well, hey, you've come to the right place. Now, Keep in mind, this kingdom is ran by a magical sorcerer. So when you hear, do you want to go to outer space, you'd assume it's something magical, right? Like, you know, they're not really going to go to outer space, but you probably imagine like a dome that'll make you see in outer space, you know, like it'll make you feel like you're in outer space. Well, instead of that or anything magical, we actually get this. <laughs> it's a kid's ride in the middle of the fucking kingdom. <laughs> What the fuck? After the musical number, we then get to meet Asha's friends, the Seven Dwarves. No, really, I'm dead serious. Her entire friend group is solely based off of the Seven Dwarves from Snow White. Yet just another classic Disney Easter egg. 
that I do not like. Yeah, I know it's a reference for Snow White again, but one thing's for sure, it definitely didn't help them become interesting at all. They introduced so many characters in a short amount of time that I just completely zoned out. The fact that Disney crammed in seven people to be in Asha's crew when they only had two working characters clearly just showed that they never intended to have that many people in the friend group in the first place. Other than Dahlia and Simon, the rest of the circle were just there for the sake of being there. So existing for the people to reference the seven dwarves fun fact and really nothing else and one of the funniest things about this is that it completely backfired i don't remember any of their names so i just ended up calling them according to the dwarf that they were based off of i mean come on guys as if i'd remember gabo or hal or bazima no why would i bother remembering that when i could just call them grumpy happy and bashful fuck i even forgot that they were in the movie and completely replaced them with the dwarves themselves to be fair that would have been fire. Well, anyways, turns out Asha applied for the job as a sorcerer's apprentice. Hey, I understood that reference. And not gonna lie, no bullshit. Out of all the movies I've watched, and I've seen a lot of movies, this movie, specifically this scene right here, has got to be one of the most lazy, half-assed, and embarrassing exposition dumps I've ever come to witness my entire life. Your interview with the king. The king's apprentices get their wishes granted. Isn't your Saba turning 100 today? You're also turning 18. You don't want to have to end up like Simon here. Oh my god. Chill with the exposition dumps, bro. Sheesh. Yeah, he says all this in like just a minute. Like boom, boom, boom. Fucking information overload over here. Calm down, bro. Jesus, fuck. Well, anyways, I sure do hope you got all that because immediately right after, we finally get to meet the main villain, King Magnifico. Okay, so props to Disney for finally giving us a straight up evil villain again. No twists, no turns, no generational trauma or other bullshit. Just a full on evil person. And as most people pointed out, Magnifico is probably the best thing about this movie. He isn't really the most memorable or the most sinister Disney villain out there, not by a long shot, but he's still a pretty decent villain. He does end up completely batshit insane in the end though, but don't worry, we'll get to that because for now, remember when I said that Magnifico's backstory is a bit confusing? Well, on this scene, he would actually go ahead and share that back in the day, his home and his family was destroyed by evil people. Well, who were these people? What did they do? Why did they do it? Are they still out there? Were they magic as well? Well, it's your lucky day because those questions were never brought up and are never addressed. Cool. Which is weird because they established that this is the reason Magnifico would go out of his way to keep the people of Rosas in check. And it just gets brushed off. No further information needed, I guess. Well, Anyways, during the interview, Asha would go off trail and would start talking about her dad. Who is, guess what, drumroll please, that's right, dead. But it doesn't go unnoticed though as it actually wins over Magnifico, which leads to him hiring her as his apprentice and showing Asha the room where he stores all of Rosa's wishes. If happiness was a tangible thing, and okay, I actually really like the song they start to sing here. It's a very soothing number and gives the feeling of protection. It's a very beautiful duet. Out of context. I know they were talking about the wishes, but holy fuck! It's such a love song that they clearly didn't have any plans for it to be used here in this scene. Like, clearly a major rewrite occurred here, but the song was either just too good to shelf or they already had it recorded and Disney was just too lazy to redo it. But with or without any context, it's still a very elegant and calming song that really does give you the classic Disney vibe. Ariana DeBose and Chris Pine sound great and both voices mesh really well together. And of course, on a rewatch, it shows the different interpretation of what our characters actually meant by protecting wishes at all costs. Asha's being genuine and sincere, talking about her Saba's wish and her Saba in general. Meanwhile, Magnifico is talking about his crown, his power, and generally all wishes, not just one. Kinda shows you what type of characters they really are. Anyways, after the song, Asha would spot her Saba's wish. And, like an idiot, she turns around and asks Magnifico if he can grant the wish. 30 seconds after he hires her to be his apprentice. That's gotta be like a world record or something, right? King Magnifico would actually reject her Saba's wish, but not because of what Asha did, but because he deems it too dangerous for being too vague. Now, in detail, Sabino's wish is actually, quote, to create something to inspire the next generation. 
Great wish, but too vague. Create what? A rebellious mob, perhaps? Uh, destroy Rosas, maybe? And I'm not gonna lie, Magnifico kinda has a point here. Why would your wish be something so vague? To create something? What the fuck does that mean? In your heart of hearts, if you felt like you had a wish that would have even the slightest chance of coming true, wouldn't you make sure that shit is specific? So Magnifico actually denies Asha's request to grant Saba's wish. For good reasons. But... Asha would counteract by criticizing Magnifico's system. Turns out, whenever someone gives away their wish, they forget all about it, easing the pain of never getting it. So here's the clip that's gotten people all riled up. As a marketing strategy, Disney decided to release a short clip of the movie and they chose this scene right here, which garnered a lot of reactions, even one for myself. And based on the comments and reactions, you would probably think that Asha in the scene was demanding for Magnifico to grant everyone's wishes and how it's unfair that they're not getting what they want, which is blatantly not what Asha is saying in this clip. Did you even watch the fucking video? I have no idea where all this hate came from, but holy shit, all Asha was saying was to have the wishes go through a moderating system where those who are innocent and harmless yet vague like Sabas can be returned. But for some fucked up reason, a lot of people I guess missed that part? At this point, Asha is clearly frustrated. And the moment she calls out Magnifico, the two would challenge each other's views and would further develop and complex their character arc, or Magnifico just becomes pure evil. Yeah. But I do gotta say though, Magnifico is actually a pretty effective villain. He doesn't actually start out thinking of world domination yet. He actually starts off as being a dick. There's this one very simple scene where he forces Asha to watch him pick someone else's wish instead of her grandpa's. All because Asha called him out. And right after that, he just rejects Asha as his apprentice right then and there in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Obviously, I will not be offering you the position as my apprentice. I will still protect your Saba's wish and your mother's forever. What a dick! See, he's not really evil, he's just really, really mean. Another thing I'd like to note that the moment he turns evil, his color palette changes from blue to green, which is a nice nod to the classic Disney villains like the Evil Queen and Maleficent. So there's that. So Asha actually gets really emotional about the wishes, which leads to her wishing upon a star. And yes, you guessed it, it's in the form of a classic I Want Disney Princess song. So I look up at the stars to guide me. And I don't care what people are gonna say, but this song is pretty good. Now, I know I harped on Mirabelle's waiting on a miracle in my other video, and I agree I may have been a bit too harsh on that one. After a few more listens, I actually found myself enjoying it more now, which kind of led to me enjoying Asha's song as well, which is saying something because I think Mirabelle's song is still way better than Asha's, but that doesn't mean Asha's song is bad. I like how it's pieced together. Are Ariana DeBose sounds amazing, and the instrumentals honestly make it feel alive. So, Asha wishes upon a star, and wouldn't you know it, it actually comes true as we meet another main character, Star. He's made of magic, but they don't really explain his powers that much. Like, most of the time, he brings inanimate objects to life, and pretty much that's it. But I can get behind the idea that he's the origin for the talking animal, so that's something. It didn't work. When does the magic happen? God, turn him back, please! He was already annoying as a non-talking goat. You just made him worse. After another musical number about how they're all stars in a way, Asha and Star come up with a plan to sneak up into King Magnifico's lair to free all the trapped wishes. The seven dwarves would catch Asha and Star though, but they instead join forces and help Asha sneak into the lair by distracting the king. And we ride! I'm sorry, I was right in your ear. And mine too! <laughs> With the plan set in motion, Asha and Star would manage to get into the lair. Overwhelmed with all the trapped wishes, our heroes quickly take into action as they try to grab as much wishes as they can so that they can- Or they completely ignore all of them and just find the wishes from Asha Saba and her mom. Exactly as they planned two minutes ago. What the fuck is this? I thought you wanted to save everyone's wishes. And you let your friends try to cover you from committing a crime and you didn't even think about saving Simon's wish as well? I can't help it if mirrors love my face. All right, let's talk about this song for a second. I get why people really don't like this song. It doesn't really omit the Disney villain vibe. To be fair, a Disney villain song can still be upbeat, but this just does not do it for me. For the majority of the song, it's him complaining that he's not really getting the praise he deserves, which 
doesn't really make sense. Up to this point, we've seen the people do nothing but praise you. This wouldn't make sense if we saw a bunch of people discrediting your work, but bro, you just came from an assembly of a bunch of people who look to you like a god. You're literally getting pissed over nothing here. The lyrics are also pretty lazily written. I let you live it for free and I don't even charge you rent. You just said the same thing twice, but that's a pretty good deal though. To this book, I don't want to be tethered, but desperate times call for desperate measures. So this is pretty much where Disney stopped giving a shit about Magnifico and decided that he is irredeemable now. To those who are still on the fence with whether or not Magnifico is in the right, well no need to worry because ta-da! He's evil now! He is definitely 100% without a doubt in the wrong. All the good valid points he made out earlier, gone. The tragic backstory about his past and how that affected him as a person, all gone. He just reads an evil book, then poof, he's possessed. And honestly... This feels like a complete corporate rewrite. How do you carefully set up this character for a solid hour, provide him with a mysterious backstory, give him a legitimate point and argument, only to completely throw all of his development out the window? Nah. It feels like this character clearly had a more complex role in the narrative, but Disney probably felt that this would be too complicated for the younger audience to understand. So right in the middle of the movie, they just write him off as plain evil. Like, I don't mind an evil villain but you can't have him be simply be an evil villain when he actually had a good point I agreed on in the end of the day he's just misunderstood in my book okay maybe not our heroes manage to escape and give Saba back his wish. All seems well, but this moment gets cut short as Magnifico shows up to their home to capture our heroes. Turns out someone ratted Asha out and told the king everything. Does this feel familiar, Sakina? I wish. <laughs> they get crushed. Oh, Mama? Hmm. Oh no, her wish! What's gonna happen? We've never seen a wish get destroyed before! <gasps> Is she gonna die? Nope, she just gets sad. I feel like an opportunity was missed here. Fucking kill her! God! Damn it, Disney! When was the last time we had a death by villain in your movies? This would have been the perfect time to show how much of a threat Magnifico is. So the dude breaks a wish and all it's gonna do is have someone's heart skip a beat? For fuck's sake, where's the stakes? This is not raising any fucking alarm! We're facing an all-powerful sorcerer and all he's done so far was grant wishes and fart green light! I wanna see some magic spells and mind-blowing visuals, thank you very much! <laughs> Ah, well, nice to see that you were able to buy some time by simply throwing a fucking bookshelf into a fucking all-time powerful magical sorcerer. It's effective too. They actually end up escaping. Surely that won't affect our view of him being a major threat whatsoever. We've run out of land. There's a boat. Well, how convenient. I say we head for the islet. We can hide there. Jesus Christ, will you shut up for two seconds? The island is right there. We can see it. We can connect the dots, you moron. Feeling guilty for essentially being the cause of all this, Asha would go back to the kingdom and try to stop Magnifico from destroying everyone's wishes. A staff of such power, even the knight will bow to my command. Wait, what? Even a knight would bow to you? You're the king! Aren't they supposed to bow to you? So I just rewatched this thing with subtitles and apparently he said knight as in the opposite of day. I thought he was talking about the soldiers. I'm an idiot. Now let's go set the stage. I'm on the hunt! <laughs> Great exit there, buddy. Totally intimidating. Asha would become the kingdom's most wanted criminal as they make up a story about her learning dark magic and destroying people's wishes. And in a reveal that kinda caught me off guard, we find out who ratted out our main hero. Guess who bravely came forward and identified her? Simon O'Donoghue! <laughs> Yep, fucking Sleepy from the Seven Dwarves North on our main character. Because of this, Sleepy's wish gets granted, but is being controlled by Magnifico. There are six more traitors, your majesty. Dahlia, Garbo, Dario, Safi, Hal, and Basima. <laughs> Got exposed by Sleepy the Dwarf. That's gonna be a new low for ya. 
With the group exposed as traitors, Magnifico basically orders everyone in the kingdom for a witch hunt. Back to our heroes, the whole crew immediately go into hiding. They reunite with Asha, and it doesn't really take that much to convince them that she's innocent, and we get another musical number. pretty catchy, the beat is pretty epic, and they do a good job making it sound like they're ready for battle, though they never really fight anyone. But with that said, this entire number is flat out a waste of time. Again, visually, they completely fumbled this musical number. Remember the mob song in the Beauty and the Beast? How the animation completely captured the essence of the song? They showed hard angles, the mob's weapons, the emphasis on fire, the slow, angry march towards the castle, the sheer seriousness of the number. Yeah, they don't really do anything close to that here. The song pretty much gets stuck about coming up with the idea of a plan instead of them actually coming up with a plan, if that makes sense. They talk about how they now know Magnifico's true colors and that they should create a revolution to save Rosas. Plain and simple. But they end up saying this the entire number. Like, we get it. We get that you'll have to stop him, but can we see how you're going to stop him? They spend the entire sequence chasing Star, all while smiling the entire time. <laughs> We are being hunted by an entire kingdom led by an evil magical sorcerer that can kill us in an instant! Why are we playing tag with a Nintendo character? The queen also joins them in the revolution to take down Magnifico. This wasn't a sudden change, by the way. It was sprinkled throughout the movie that she was starting to lose hope and her trust for him, but it still kinda bothers me that she never really mentions that killing Magnifico is off the table. She just willingly joins the group with no idea what the end game was. Girl, I know he's evil and all, but that's Tell your husband whom you've loved for years. Maybe setting a few ground rules might be a good idea, no? But for what it's worth, this would mean they now have someone in the inside who can help. So with the group already, Asha would break down their big grand plan to take down Magnifico and free all the wishes. Asha and Star have been spotted in the forest. Is that so? Sound the trumpets, Amaya. I'll bring back the girl and the star. Okay, we must work quickly. And quietly! <laughs> That's your big plan? To tell him that you found Asha in the forest and hope to God he leaves? He's the king! He doesn't even need to leave the room! He has knights for that shit! What did you think that he was gonna do? That he was gonna grab a horse and run off to the forest all by himself? And that's exactly what he fucking did, didn't he? Uh... So their big grand plan was to simply lure Magnifico away from the castle and have the rest of the seven dwarves find a way to free the wishes. Simple enough, right? Well, I forgot to mention that before the chase, Star would actually give Asha a magic wand. So with that context and Magnifico right at their heels, does this mean we finally get to see Asha overcome her weakness as an irrational person and stand up against the villain which results to an epic showdown of magic and power? No! Instead, we see her run away! And run away again. And run some more. More running. And she lost her wand. And now she's cornered. And she's in danger. I feel like she's not really the best Disney princess you've come up with. I have to be completely honest, Disney. Shut up! But in a twist that kind of caught me off guard, turns out it wasn't Magnifico chasing her the entire time. It was Sleepy, all part of Magnifico's big trap. <laughs> You really think you can take me down? Ah! Ah, please don't hurt me! Ah! <laughs> it's not me you should be afraid of. Boo! No! Boo! Start killing people again, Disney, for fuck's sake! So Star would fall for Magnifico's trap and would get captured. And so would Asha. Oh, good lord, girl, you have been useless! In fact, there will be no more hope. No more dreams. Okay, so at this point, I'll be completely honest here. I have no idea what Magnifico is trying to accomplish here. I thought he just wanted Star and to get rid of Asha, but the moment he has both, he kind of just loses his mind. He starts to ramble about not allowing hopes and dreams and starts to take the people of Rosas hostage. I... I don't know why he would do that. Bro, they were on your side a second ago. I guess you can say it was the book doing all that and that he's just possessed, but they never really explain what the book is, where it came from, and what it can do. All I know is that it's evil and so is Magnifico now. I I don't know, he's just full-blown evil now. I honestly have nothing else to say. So with all the wishes destroyed, Magnifico takes Star and absorbs all his powers. The kingdom has been taken over by the dark magic and it seems Asha has failed to protect Rosas. Until no, I'm a star. we are. Please, a star. 
Hey, look, the stupid talking animal song in the beginning actually had a purpose. Would you look at that? So I look out at the stars just like me. That's right. With some, say it with me, Disney bullshit, the people of Rosas rise up against Magnifico and his dark magic, and they all start making new wishes which would combat his magical powers. This would lead to a reprieve of Asha's song, this time sang by the people of Rosas. Hands down, probably the best song in the movie. The whole scene genuinely gave me chills when they start to join in and sing as an ensemble. The number being a reprieve from a song that was initially sang alone by Asha actually worked really well, because at this point, the song has been established. So to hear it in a wider grand and scale during the climax of the movie leaves you mesmerized. Visually, it's also pretty good. With the people's wishes shining and quickly overpowering the green mist, it makes the number 10 times better, and is even better seen on a wide shot. So everyone's wishes would overpower the dark magic, and just like that, all destroyed wishes come back to life, so does Star, and finally, Magnifico is defeated. Fast forward to the next day, and everyone's all happy. The queen now rules Rosas, and Asha gets a new and improved one. I don't know why this was so important, she's using the old one. <laughs> oh, my voice is really high when I cry. And your voice is really annoying when you talk. So turns out Star isn't staying long and hands over the reins of the role of fairy godmother to Asha. Ooh, so does that mean Asha's the fairy godmother we see in the other Disney movies? Probably not. So with the movie just about to wrap up, let's listen in to what Disney has to say with the last sentence of the movie that's celebrating their 100th anniversary. Star, how can we ever thank you? <laughs> That's easy. Just keep wishing. <laughs> huh? That's the note you want to end on? Just keep wishing? Just keep wishing. That's it. Just keep wishing. You're not going to end with the Walt Disney quote? That's it. Just keep wishing. Okay. Uh, I wish that I bought a ticket to a better movie. Damn, you couldn't even make it look like the castle from the logo. What a mess. Look, I know we hate Disney and all, but oftentimes, we kinda just hate for the sake of hating. We have to admit, Disney has also given us a few good projects recently. Encanto wasn't that long ago, Elemental was pretty decent, and that's about it. But that doesn't mean there wasn't some good aspects to it. But sadly, with this movie, there's really nothing more you can say other than it's just disappointing. This is an animated movie you're releasing on your 100th anniversary. This was supposed to be the big Disney movie. The big grand movie that would tie everything together. A hundred years of celebrating the best of the best. The best characters. The best stories. The best songs. The best memories. And all we got was nothing. Just a big pile of meh. What's sad is that this feels like a movie Disney really cut corners with. The art style being what it is, doesn't look good. I don't care if it's 3D trying to replicate 2D. It looks unfinished. It looks like a Disney movie on its first draft. I understand the pressure Disney probably felt since everyone else is taking a step above the creative department, but to try out this type of art style for your 100th anniversary was such a terrible idea. Either pay homage to your origin and make a hand-drawn traditional animated movie, or simply make it CG. Either make it look like Princess and the Frog, or make it look like Encanto. There's really nothing in between. But fuck, if you really wanted to go down this route, then maybe at least make it look better? The songs being written by folks who write pop songs was also such a red flag. Disney was known for their amazing Broadway-esque musical numbers, so not hiring people who worked on musicals just doesn't make sense. And I really don't want to get into it, but I have to. Asha is such a bad main character. She doesn't really have much of a personality other than being bubbly and quirky which doesn't really do much. We have a lot of characters like her already. Her motivations have good intentions but it kinda comes off as selfish. She doesn't really prove anything to the audience that she's a capable protagonist. They tried to go there by pointing out that she's young and irrational but that doesn't really go anywhere. She doesn't really overcome her irrationality and trust me it's heavily felt in the movie. And what's worse is that she ends up with exactly what she wanted by virtually doing 
doing nothing for most of the movie. The story is fine. It's nothing special but I actually prefer the first version but we don't have to talk about that. Apart from Magnifico, the characters are either forgettable or really annoying. The songs are a hit and miss, the dialogue is so unnatural, and the references are either really distracting and out of place or completely pointless. And overall, the whole thing just feels nothing. Now don't get me wrong, Wish is still enjoyable for a specific taste. As a standalone animated movie, it's fine. It's okay. Kids won't mind it. They won't love it, but it'll keep them occupied. As a standalone Disney movie, however, eh, I'm not so sure about that. How about as a movie that would serve as a celebration for the 100 years of Disney? Nope, never had the chance. Disney had so much potential on this one, but sadly, they just couldn't pull through. Wish clearly had a bigger vision in mind, but rather than focusing on the magic and remember what made them amazing, they went the safest route and they paid the price. This movie isn't so much of a celebration of what Disney has accomplished. Instead, it's a brutal reminder of what Disney has become. So with that, I'm giving Disney's wish a 4 out of 10. That's for today's video. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Have a great day and a great life and I'll see you all next time. Bye!